moment and reflect on what your career means to you. For me, it means opportunity. The opportunity to do something I love and to make an impact that I truly care about. But that's not how I always viewed my career. Prior to making the decision to start my own company, Collab Software, my career was confusing and uncertain because I was continuously trying to fit the mold of the typical career. The world around us is continuously changing, and so is the definition and expectation for a career. New technology are allowing people to learn and find jobs in a multitude of different ways, and no one path is truly the right path anymore. And at the same time, growing connectivity is bringing the world closer together. Years ago, there were many barriers to where you physically lived, but in today's world, these are disappearing daily. According to an IDC study, 75% of the US will work remote, either part-time or full-time, by 2020. Six years ago, when I was finishing high school, if you had told me that I would have three careers in the next decade and become a mobile worker, I wouldn't have believed you. At that time, I remember the favorite question being, what are you doing after high school? And although I had no idea, I was very fortunate to be close to my father, who helped me establish my options, the typical things that people could do. I knew that I liked science and technology, so I decided to give engineering a try, with the hope and expectation that if I liked it, I would do it for the next 30 years. During my first year, though, there were many ups and downs, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do or who I wanted to become. But to make that even more challenging, my father, who had been one of my biggest supporters, was battling an inoperable form of cancer. And shortly after my first year, my father passed away. At that point, I was more lost than ever before because for the first time, I truly had to think for myself. And I can remember immediately looking for answers, like he would have wanted on how to move forward with my life. But that typically resulted in thoughts of not being able to do the things that I truly cared about, whether it was building self-driving cars at Google or making a last, lasting impact in the medical sector. But throughout this period, I was fortunate that I actually had the experience of working several years on exciting energy projects. I learned a lot and I enjoyed it, but ultimately I realized that it wasn't what I truly cared about and wanted to do for the rest of my life. But making a change seemed near impossible. At the end of my third year, I decided to step outside of that comfort zone, and I applied to work for Google. But I got rejected, multiple times actually. And at that point I kind of thought, I just wasn't good enough to work for a company like Google. So I gave up, went back to school, uh, and went on with my day. But a couple months later, one of my good friends came to me and told me about this exciting Hyperloop pod competition being hosted by SpaceX and Elon Musk. The idea was for student teams around the globe to bring his idea of the fifth, con fifth mode of transportation to life, a levitating train-like vehicle that would float from city to city in vacuum tubes at speeds up to 1,200 kilometers an hour. I was very skeptical because I didn't even believe it was possible at first. But after some heavy convincing, I decided to make the change. When you actually look at this, the journey was filled with overwhelming moments of doubt and uncertainty, a series of rejections and failures, but ultimately a lot of learning and life lessons. Eight months after I joined this team, I started leading this group of six universities, and a year later, we actually finished second place in the world. But what was even more exciting was the paradigm shift that it provoked, because at that point it had given me the confidence to seek an internship with Reflection Medical a company that's building the world's first ever biology-guided radiotherapy system. And what that means is a system that can track a patient's tumor as they're being treated. So a whole new opportunity and a whole new set of hope for cancer patients around the world. A very ambitious plan, but after losing my father, I knew it was something I had to do. Oftentimes when we look at our ambitious plans, our own self-doubt can destroy them before we even give them a chance. We let the fear of competition with the rest of the world place an imaginary ceiling on our potential, and we become trapped within a structure of our own self-doubt. But the world we're dealing with is not as scary or as well put together as it seems. The world's biggest companies and most influential people appear to be working incredibly efficiently, but that's rarely the case. What they are very good at doing is remaining calm, staying the course, and pushing forward when everything else around them is crashing. Take Elon Musk, for example. He crashed three rockets, and he had been on the verge of bankruptcy before we found any success with SpaceX. And while I was working on this Hyperloop project, I met Elon Musk. And as you can imagine, I was incredibly nervous, and I didn't know what to say to him. So the first thing he said to us was, how can I help? And he truly meant that. So now that we were best friends with Elon Musk for 30 seconds, 
we boldly decided to ask him to extend the entire competition by a full day. And on the spot, he turned to his colleague, 100 people around on live camera, and made that change. So if even the most influential people are human, then so are recruiters and hiring managers that often seem intimidating during the job hunt. What they're looking for is usually relatively simple, and that's value and fit. Your value describes how, how well you perform a job based on your experience, education, skills, and personality. It describes how well you can add an impact to a company and how you can contribute to their overall value. At the same time, your cultural fit is almost just as important. When you meet people, they inherently want to understand how well you'd work with their team, what are your goals and objectives, and how you handle tough situations. When I initially described this Hyperloop concept, you were probably envisioning some form of alien space vehicle that traveled at speeds that either made you uncomfortable or think I'm irrational. But after doing this for two years, I view it as far more than a new mode of transportation. Today, I view the Hyperloop as a vehicle for learning, finding and creating your passion. It was a vehicle that enabled myself and many others, like my teammates Matt and Mark, to actually create our own careers and ultimately build those tools, skills, and experiences that we needed along the way. The important part to realize is that the Hyperloop is only one example of a vehicle for learning. And there are many others that can be your vehicles for learning. They come in many forms, and ultimately there are any action that allow you to create experience, build your personal brand, and grow your network. When you go to look for that dream job, and you can't get it because you don't have the experience required, it's incredibly frustrating and demotivating. And you can feel like you're trapped in a vicious circle with no path of breaking free. But there's many ways to develop this experience outside of previous jobs. Taking on side projects, joining teams, volunteering, doing courses, and really learning in any way you're comfortable are all valuable resources. When I recruit for CoLab, we always look for the unique and interesting things that people do. And companies around the world, big and small, are doing the same. As important as this experience is, your personal brand is how you showcase that to the world. It's how you portray yourself and their interpretations of your strengths, weaknesses, and overall value. Capturing this and showcasing in a humble and professional way and then showing your growth is incredibly important. And oftentimes, the value of this is underestimated. But the good thing is, it's never too early or too late to get started. To make the most, though, of this personal brand, you need to build, grow, and expand on that network. Years ago, I can remember hearing people say, he only got that job because he knew someone, or she only found that position because of a family connection. And this was viewed in a negative way. With the power of networking events and digital platforms today, it is becoming ever more important to connect with people, build relationships, and add value to that community. I'd argue that your network and your community is as important as your experience itself. Building is not easy, and you're going to be rejected more often than accepted. But for the times it does work, it's well worth it. When I initially described Reflection Medical, I left out one key part. I didn't actually apply to work there. I connected with one of the VPs of the company on LinkedIn. He had many common interests, so I decided to reach out to him. The funny part was, a day earlier, I had never heard of Reflection Medical, and I only learned about them because of LinkedIn's people you may know algorithm. So a random connection and a simple message of interest literally changed my entire life. While I worked there, I worked with one of the coolest, most passionate, innovative teams in the world. And day in and day out, they inspired me to pursue my goals. And when I told them that I wasn't coming back, that I was starting my own company, they encouraged me to do that. But taking all this experience, packaging into a brand, and actually showcasing this to your network is really difficult. But it usually starts with a resume. The key thing to realize is that your resume is not just a piece of paper. It's a story your story, one in which people should open, read the first few points, and then dive in out of interest. At the end of your resume, you should leave people with an understanding of who you are, what your value is, and intrigued to learn more. Studies have shown that recruiters will look at your resume for six seconds before they've made a decision. And based on stats from the UK, the average person needs to apply to 27 jobs before they actually get accepted for an interview for a full-time position. So it's pretty clear that the only way to bring down that 27 is to increase that value in the first six seconds. To do this, it requires an effective plan, 
one in which you showcase your value and how you can add that and how you'll fit their team. And by ensuring your resume is custom built and strategically showcases your strengths, you can make the most of those first six seconds. And a good test for ensuring you've done this effectively is what I call the nearsight fireside test. So first take your resume, hold out an arm's length from your face. You shouldn't be able to read the details, but you should be able to get the main points with little effort. If not, you need to adjust your format, order, and layout. Then bring that resume close to a comfortable reading position and try reading top to bottom, word for word. If you skip over any part of your resume, even a single word, you've likely not been as concise or effective as you could have been. The really powerful part about building a good resume is it makes building other tools like personal websites, portfolios, and profiles much easier. And don't underestimate this value. A recent study on LinkedIn showed that 92% of recruiters will look at your profile during the hiring process. So in order to be successful, ensure that these profiles are complete. Ensure that the same information is expanded upon to the proper medium and get all that information out there for people to see. Contributing to your community by sharing content, interesting learnings, and valuable work are all great ways for your profile to be noticed. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is showcase that value and contribute to that community. When I started on my career search several years ago, I was really just on autopilot. And I was just taking the career path I was told to take. And it wasn't until I really realized that there was a difference between the real and perceived limitations that I began to learn and grow. And at that point, I realized there really were no limits. Ordinary people do extraordinary things every single day. They use their tools effectively, and they build upon their weaknesses. What they do, rather than focusing on why they can't do something, they shift their attention to how they can do it. So when I talked about that first year of me struggling and not knowing what to do, my father would always sit there so relaxed and unfazed by anything I told him. His confidence in me never wavered, and that was something that I wanted to ensure never changed. The power of believing in yourself and eliminating those imaginary barriers will empower you to do what you want. So in order to be successful and find a career you love, remember these three things. The world has changed. Careers are constantly changing and evolving, and it's okay if yours is completely different than everyone else. We need to shift our mindset to think about how this incredible new access opportunity can help us. Everyone has their doubts, so don't be discouraged by that. Even the most influential people are only human, just like you. If you can make an authentic connection with them, incredible things can happen. And finally, define your value and fit. Find those experiences, package it into your brand, and showcase that to your network. It's not a simple process, and it's not going to work all the time, but keep trying. Because for every time a rocket has failed Elon, for every time your resume is rejected, and for all the ideas that don't work, there's always another opportunity and it's never worth giving up on what you care about the most.